Hey guys, Blue Dubs here, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I am recording some Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, this is the trilogy, so it's all the games mixed into one, I think. Um, which will be fun. I literally know nothing about um, Ace Attorney other than there's a guy named Edgeworth, <laughs> and there's lawyers. Um... <laughs> so, uh, I'm really excited to get into this. Uh, I'm really happy that I bought the game. Um, it's... <laughs> um, I really hope this does well. Uh, and you guys like this content. Um, I'm gonna try doing a lot more gaming content, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I don't know how long these episodes are going to be. Uh, I'm recording this pretty late right now. Uh, so it's... I don't... It might not be that long. Uh, it just depends on how it's going, you know? Eventually, I may um, just expand the episodes or shorten them. Um, you guys just let me know what you think um, in the comments below. So, without further ado, let's get on into it. Oh, this is nice art. Play the first turnabout. Is this the first game? I don't know. I'm very confused. I don't know how the games work. Ah! My cat just knocked something over. Yes. Wait, is it auto-skipping the text? That's rude. Damn it! Why me? Can't get caught. Not like this! I, I, I gotta find someone to pin this on. Are they telling us who it is? Someone like... HIM! I'll make it look like... HE DID IT! Shut up, made a gross old man voice. <laughs> August 3rd, 9.47am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous! Right! Oh, hi. Uh, uh, hi, hiya, Chief! Woo, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. Or, kind of owe my... English. <laughs> He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I really like her design. It's interesting. The art's looking, like, is very clean as well. I mean, I... It's just unique, you know. <laughs> I, I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death! Despair! Oh! Is this, like, Danganronpa? Despair? <laughs> Despair! Ew! Hope! <laughs> Nagito. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Uh, um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey. Hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I'm afraid to die! What? Okay, so this is Larry, I'm guessing, obviously. He's- why does he want to die? Or oh, why does he want to be said that he's guilty? What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over! I- I'm finished! Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't! 
Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me! Who took my baby away? Hmm... The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? Is his name Nick? Why is it... Phoenix, though? I'm so confused, but whatever. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a simply fair, a fit, blah, 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 a fairly simple one. All right, so that's uh, his girlfriend or something, maybe. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts, my best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. <laughs> In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, that and I owe him one, which is why I took the case. To clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August... August 3rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Oh. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <coughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial. Gundam, stop it! Stop! Stop clawing at the back of my chair. Mimi. This is not your first trial, is it not? Or this is your first trial. Ah. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'm, um, a little nervous. Your conduction during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank... Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, given this... Guide him! <laughs> Stop it! Given the circumstances... I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Handshaking, eyesight fading. Why does it like... I don't know. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Obviously, it's Larry. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Ooh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait, uh-oh. No way. No way, I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't remember hearing her name. Phoenix! Are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name! Oh, the victim! Of course I know the victim's name! I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. Did- was I supposed to read through that? Wait. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. How does she know this barth wall breaking? Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cindy. Cindy Stone, the victim in this case. She's a model who lives in an apartment by herself. Press your face, lax presence, blah, blah, blah. 
generally bad at getting his points across. Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me what the what's the cause of death? She died because she was also blood due to blood trauma. She struck once with a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Is there a voice acting in this? Well then. I thought there was, but you know. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. Or, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> As Mr. White just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that blunt object was? The murder weapon for was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Can I, can, can I do that? Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. I want to look at this more. Okay. So the attorney badge. No one would believe I was a defense attorney if I didn't carry this. Is this going to come into play? Sydney's autopsy report. So the time of death was July 31st, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. And loss of blood trauma. A statue in the shape of the finger. It's rather heavy. Okay. So that's literally all. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what- or er, um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything. Unfortunate. Uh-oh. Mary gets excited easily. This could be bad. Because <laughs> I just twitched. Ahem. Mr. Butts, it is, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, <laughs> Cleopatra and Mark Anthony! Um, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever oh buddy, buddy! You're good, bro. How old is the L take? No. <laughs> What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! <laughs> Funny! Funny! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on July 30th, the day before the murder. Um, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> you know, you do, you boo. <laughs> daddies? Sugar? 
Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. She's just doing herself, you know. Tell me, Mr. Boss, what do you think of her now? R right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? I don't know what to do here. Um, I'd stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. The question is irre irrelevant to this case. Oof, wince. Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. Oh fuck, did I choose the wrong one? You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, do you, do you not? Gulp. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> oh, oh, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. He went. What do I do? I don't know what I choose. I'm gonna stop him from answering. I'll send him a signal. Oh wait, lie? I didn't want him to lie to stop from answering. Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing from the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prefer prosecution may call its witness. Yes, your honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspaper at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawitch to the stand. It's this dick. Who does he remind me of? Mr. Sawitch, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to think out, figure out his voice. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sowert, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witnesses account. I don't know why they show us who's... I don't know. I guess we should know who's guilty, probably, in order to prove the uh, client wrong. Right, 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 right. right. Innocent. Ah! I was going toward, uh, I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. When I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead, I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Didn't the murder happen between 4 to 5 p.m.? Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? Well, I mean, it was, that was my fault. I can't defend you like against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? 
Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to be work? Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Misawit used was one of those, Your Honor. I have a record of the blackout for your pursual. Which you see, Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. All right. Oh, Mr. White. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross examination. C cross examination? Your Honor. All right. Right? <laughs> Sorry, it took me a second to, my, for my brain to function those in the same sentence. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness gave. Lies? What, he was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove that he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face! Um, okay. Open the court record with tab, then point out the contradictions in the testimony. I was going door to- I was going door to door, selling subs- oh, I'm just gonna read it normally. Descriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry, and he left the door half open behind him. Now check this. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Yeah, it was... You found the body at 1 p.m., you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to... er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? <laughs> oh, that. Oh, um. This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, um. Well, I. Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, Wright. Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video t of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Obviously, it's because the power was out. No, wait, I forgot to... No. Let's see something about hearing the television. The witness has testified. He heard the time. I didn't mean to press that. Alright, 
So I go here. Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. <laughs> you couldn't have heard the tele a television or a video. Gah, I... Well, um... The defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Seawit? Seawit? No, I... I found it quite puzzling myself. Quite! Uh, uh, wait! I remember now. Mr. Seawit. The court would prefer to hear an accurate, accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather distraught. Yeah, look how much he's sweating! I don't think I'd go into a fucking courtroom, see a guy sweating that much, and think they're a, not a murderer, or, like, have some sort of disease, okay? M my apologies, Your Honor. It, uh... It seems... It must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sword. Let's hear your testimony one more time, please. One more time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I... I saw it! There was a table clock in the apartment. Uh, wasn't there? Yeah, the, the murder weapon. The killer used it uh, to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw the clock? I guess I would explain it. The defendants may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Wait, I don't get this one. He saw the time. There's a clock in the apartment wasn't there. The murder weapon, the killer used to... I thought the statue was used. Objection! Just wait a moment! It just slams the desk. I love that. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was the statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? Ugh, you, you with your objections and your evidence, just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as, my sta as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Do I? Like, how would he know it was a clock? How would he see it if he didn't touch it? Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testifies that he's never entered the apartment. Clearly a, contra a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... went into the apartment! You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. And, oh yeah, prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that! I can prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the bow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What is the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the defense's witness's face. 
Will the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with a clock? I... Th that day I... I, I never... Look, I... Uh, the, the clock! I, I heard no! I, I mean, I saw... saw, saw uh, oh. <laughs> Shut Wait! <laughs> just fucking eat it, stupid! <laughs> shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him! I tell you, I saw him! He killed her, and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting this defense's claims. Mr. Wright, Your Honor, you claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Y Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sawwood heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear clear if you simply see on the clock's batteries. Ask the neighbors. Try sounding the clock. Can I check the report? Well, I mean, obviously the clock has to have batteries, right? All you have to all you have to do is examine the batteries. Um, the batteries are in the right way. The clock seems to be working fine. What exactly did you mean, Mr. Wright? That the clock was working fine. Yes. And oh, fuck. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I got confused back there with all those testimonies. Mr. Wright, I expect more from a lawyer in this court. Oh, fuck. I'm afraid I have to penalize you. Try to think things more through more carefully. Y yes, Your Honor. As I was saying, the whole case is riding on this. I better think here. Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Ask the neighbors. All I have to do is talk with the victim... To the neighbors. Talk to the neighbors? I'm sure one of them heard the clock tell the time when the incident occurred. I see. Does the prosecution have anything to say, Mr. Payne? We have already made all the necessary inquiries. Everyone living near the victim's apartment was al fuck. Furthermore, even if a neighbor had heard the clock, that would not prove that Mr. Sawbert had heard anything. That's true. Maybe wrong. Uh... uh. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Let me think about it again. The whole case is riding on this. I better think through it carefully. Y Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sawwood heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Oh. <laughs> try to talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing! Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? Well, I may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. Proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case! He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it! I was so close! Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness, unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Salt. I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime! Uh, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. Failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Did I lose? 
Not so fast, Mr. Sawat. Oh? Mia, y I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can still, can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow, and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason, and you have your proof. Right? Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes, because she was in Paris, right? Wait. Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that I could prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Huh. Top words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. That's different. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit? Or should I say... Oh. M Mr. I... Oh. This man had a seizure. Uh, order, order, I say. The fuck? Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, your honor. Very well. Wouldn't you have seen that? Mr. Wright? Yes, your honor. I have to say, I am impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at, culprit at the same time. Thank you, your honor. At this point, it is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. And with that, this court is adjourned. All right. And that went smoothly. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself into to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. August 3rd, 2.32 p.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Ooh, I still can't believe we won. Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! Th thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all, not at all! You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad, 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 bad! Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever! Larry, she was a... <sighs> never... never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. 
<laughs> Harry butts, ha, huh? funny. <laughs> I'm child. <laughs> uh, thanks, I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Uh, here, take this. It's a present. He trying to... Uh... <laughs> a present? For me. Wait. Wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this cock for her. I made one for her and one for me. R really You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. What the fuck is going on? Sip! I mean... Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you... <laughs> I'm so... He's just like... 360... Or... 180, this guy. Not 360. I'm fucking stupid. Don't that just make you want to cry? <laughs> Larry... Are you so sure? Excuse me? Uh, what? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me, it's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, huh? Oh yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? Is it the clock itself? Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about the clock? This is a clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. That's cute. But also really sad. Well... Make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. That, that was, that was fun. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. Hey. He got game. We'll drink a toast to innocent busts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry. You were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me about more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks. Hey, he getting in. <laughs> Yo, he's sliding into those DMs. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me, uh. I didn't know when then. That clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. Yo, is he gonna die? Bet's butts better not die. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Does the boss die? Does one of them die? Tell me one of them don't die. Please don't die. No, I like them both. I like doing the boss's voice. Brand new episode has been added. Well, guys, 
Uh, that, I think, is going to be it for the first episode. Um, it was a lot of, um, a lot of fun. Uh, I didn't do a lot of commentating. Uh, I found it a little difficult to, uh, figure out what to say, but, you know, uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the characters, the animations, uh, they're all, all seem very interesting. Uh, I'm very terrified for the next episode. <laughs> uh, then we got, um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let me um, know what you guys think down in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this and uh, if you want to see more of it. Um, I'm definitely going to be doing more of it anyways, but um, yeah. That is all for this video. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe. Only like 7% of you are subscribed, which like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> that's rude. No. Uh... <laughs> Uh, also, um, just, you know, quarantine and COVID stuff, it's, it's been a rough, like, year, year? Is it been a year? It's been a rough long time, and, uh, I hope you guys are doing just a friendly reminder to take care of yourself. Love yourself. Alright, bye. <laughs> bye, guys.